so picked up my check since I never dealt with them I uh, COD anyways I wanted to uh, to show up and get the check not only for the money but I wanted to be able to introduce myself in person to them since you know, I did move 15 cars for them could turn into something you know regular but um nice guy really nice guy and uh got our check and uh we did get some more business out of it so the thing is that they're in these little parking lots and i had to uh park out here on the street and walk around to to find where his uh his actual dealer was so that's it for the week maybe saturday at 11:35. Let's uh, let's go home. Let's go get my little nugget. Take her to lunch, and uh, see what the rest of this weekend has for us. Well, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's Monday, and uh, we're just getting started here early in the morning. It's uh, I don't know, six o'clock or something. Fueling up and uh, getting ready to uh, go hook up the trailer. We got the mega cab, no trailer. Used it for a personal vehicle this weekend, uh, but we're gonna take this out on a trip. Uh, I put it up for sale, and then kind of started to regret my decision of putting it up for sale. Uh, because I do love this truck, it runs great, it has zero issues, it's rust free, and even with it being a mega cab, um, being able to haul freight with it like I do light stuff, it's perfect for that because of the size of the cab, and uh, yeah, so finish getting this fuel here, and we'll go get the trailer, headed out towards uh. It's right at about the uh, the Indiana Ohio line on 70, so got a little bit of ways to go, but that won't be till later today. Uh, Cause I'm gonna get my daughter all day today, spend time with her, and then get out on the road. So I did a quick service on the truck last night, just an oil and filter change. Oh, this is all my used oil. I'm gonna put it in my big hundred and I think it's 175 gallon tote. Uh, but don't forget to grease your ball hate when I hear squeaking noise coming from the ball. I just use um, wheel bearing grease. I like these tubs because I can just get one and toss it in the truck. The tubes, they get, uh, they never really seal up good and they make a mess. And then the grease gun is always in the shop or in a different truck. So I just leave one of these. It doesn't matter what kind you use, just to have some type of lubrication on the ball. Because um, what can happen with no lubrication, it can actually, either wear out the ball or wear out the inside of the neck and they can actually come apart. Uh, I've seen it a bunch with people using like uh, bumper pull hitches and it wears out either the neck of the trailer or the ball and they actually come apart. So it's good to good to keep some grease on you. So we're gonna get this hooked up real quick and uh, that jack over there's having some issue the, on the trailer so I have it a floor jack under it. I uh, will take a look at that and I uh, actually got new magnets made for the truck this morning. Um, said they would start on them at 8, so it's 8.02. Hopefully they uh, get them done quickly. They said they haven't done by lunch for me since I lost a magnet because they were getting uh, a little rippled, so they're getting air underneath. But we'll get this hooked up, get that oil dumped, get that rest of that firewood that I was using this weekend out of there. Spare tire up on top and then uh, go pick up a load. Man, another easy one. Another single dump body. Two straps. That's all you need. Plenty of room back here. We're picking up a Jeep. I think it may be a four door. I'm not 100% sure. It doesn't matter because we've got plenty of room. This is only 12 foot. We have at least one foot overhang up on the front. So all we got to do is pick up our Jeep, strap that down, and then this is off towards, uh, off to Ohio. All right, we're at Mannheim. My carpooler is around here somewhere. Said he's got my keys, he's got my Jeep pulled out. So I got my new decals on, if you guys can see. A little expensive, but they rushed them for me. 
definitely do some more business with them. Uh, they are a local company. So, other than that, it's starting to rain. Get this Jeep loaded up and uh, see how far we've got plenty of time. 425 now, so. In fact, they were just getting started for the day. We got plenty of time to drive through the night. All right, lane 20, which is up here for 10 bucks. She just rolled up, they pulled my car out. She just rolled up, handed me the key, told me where it was parked, see how they're numbered. Lane 20, we see, should see a gray Jeep right on the other side of that red Chevy, whatever. There's one of those new Mustang, electric Mustangs. Is there, I've seen one of those before. But, uh, should be me here. All right, well, I just got a call from one of my Patreon members. I'm going to give him a call back once we get out to get out on the road. Thanks for uh, being a member, Riley. I appreciate it. So we got to do our, we actually already did, already did our inspection. But what I like to do when I do my inspections is keep, I like to pull it right up to my truck. So when I'm taking the pictures, they can see that where the vehicle is. So I know from this point, I take the pictures to then it's on my trailer. And then when it's off my trailer, I am in control of this vehicle. I don't like taking pictures when it's over here, parked in between cars because you can't really see. I know from this point on, the vehicle's in my possession. All right, just like that, load it up. Jeep, plenty of room. Kind of centered it, centered it over the axles because this thing's like 3,000 pounds up front. I know obviously the Jeep on the back. So uh, someone asked in my last video where this uh, Sheets was. Well, this is outside of New Stanton. Remember I was here the other day and the concrete was fresh? This is what I'm talking about. It don't take long to get all oil stained. It's crazy how much some of these trucks leak, but I don't hate it. Uh, so we topped off here. We got 21 gallons. Uh, what was it? 3.45 a gallon. I'm actually going to run in here and get dinner. It's almost 9 o'clock. And then uh, it's actually starting to flurry some. And I know we're expecting some weather the next two days. And the temperature dropped off quite a bit today. Uh, wind picked up. It's like 30, 40 mile an hour winds. And uh, truck said 29 degrees. So if it does start snowing bad enough, I'll just pull it over. But maybe we'll avoid any any type of weather tonight but it's dinner time oh all right well we made it to like 10 30. um somewhere in ohio we're just right outside of cambridge ohio actually and i'm watching this guy currently in this fuel island hold on he just hit the the yellow pole that protects the pumps I guess maybe he's trying to back in beside me here. Because this is probably where I'm going to end up staying for the night. It's a little, uh, a little fuel mart. And uh, a bunch of, well, not a bunch of parking, but it's not like overly packed. And there's not people parked like assholes everywhere. So, yeah, he's backing in beside me here. So, I'm just going to sit here and make sure... So this is an expediting truck. It's got it's a 53 foot trailer, but I want to make sure it's not a reefer. I don't want to have to sit here and listen to that all night. Get back here and make my uh, make my bed in my king size suite. Got my blankets washed, my pillowcases washed, and hop out here and do a uh, quick post trip. Use the restroom, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Nope, just like that. The deck is empty, and we're on to the next one. Make a cab out here looking fine. So unfortunately, I hate to say this, but I think it's time to whip out the big jacket. Hate bringing a big jacket. Hate putting it on, because it's gonna take it on and off. That's why I usually wear a vest like this because it keeps you warm enough out there with a sweatshirt underneath, but then you don't get too hot when you're driving down the road if you're jumping in and out of the truck. But 18 degrees right now. Wind's blowing a little bit out there, so 
it's a little chilly. Now, on to the next. We uh, have got a uh, I've got two Copart vehicles. Well, a Copart and an IAA vehicle to pick up. I already called ahead on the one because it's owner retained, which I guess means they tried to sell it, it didn't sell, or something happened, and now I'm picking up and taking it to a different auction. And here's why I don't like buying cars or looking at cars that are from auction or come from auction, which, I mean, look at this mega cab. It had a blown head gasket when I bought it. Um, is because this vehicle that I'm picking up from a Copart salvage auction is now being transported to Mannheim, Pennsylvania and being checked in for the office. It's like a Range Rover or a Land Rover or something like that. And uh, we'll see what we get into. But I already called ahead and they, they have the vehicle. It's ready to be released. So that's just what I wanted to make sure I could get it up on the trailer and uh, go from there. See what, see what we get into with this vehicle. And the only reason I agreed to pick this vehicle up was because... Uh, the other vehicle I'm getting, he was like, oh, my buddy has one out there in Ohio that needs to come back this way to Pennsylvania. Do you think you could get it? And I like was like, well, how far away is it? And it was only uh, like 15 minutes. So it's like uh, IAA and then Copart in the same town. So it's only like 15 minutes apart. And he said he would pay you the same that they would pay the same him um so they wouldn't try to like get a deal or anything because i'm getting both of them so i said sure and uh i haven't been to copart in forever and there's a reason why i don't go to copart uh because it turns into a headache most of the time but actually kind of confident with confident with this one just because of the way uh the communication was between the customer and i and uh where the vehicles are going, they're they're just going to uh, all set. Let's go. Facilities. It's not like they're going to a port or any of that kind of activity. In a quarter of a mile. All right, I'm well, parked at Copart here. This is in Dayton, Ohio. This could get a little interesting, and I'll explain why. This is Copart for you, Copart Logic. Copart Logic is a uh, is a world of its own. So sometimes you just have to, uh, if it makes sense um, to you, it's not going to make sense to the rules of Copart. That's for sure. All right, so I figured it out. So, like I said, this is an owner retained vehicle, and I have a copy of the title here. It looks like it was either like a stolen recovery or um, a, a repossession because it's owned by Capital Marketing and it comes from a luxury motor car company. Uh, so I don't know if it was like a stolen recovery or a rental car or something. Anyways, the lady in the office was like, so since it's owner retained, we have to set it over here at this garage door and you have to load it because we don't, we don't want to mess it up anymore. I was like, well, if he's gonna pick it up with the forks, instead of setting it back down on the ground, why doesn't he just set it on a trailer? So she's like, well, we can't load owner retained vehicles so we don't mess them up. She's like, wait out here. So I'm standing over there where I was standing and uh, the guy beeps the horn and he waves me over. He says, are you picking up the Land Rover? I said, yeah, why? He's like, all right, um, I gotta pull it over to this garage door. I gotta take pictures of it, like they're outbound pictures so they don't get accused of any damage. And uh, he says, I'll just sit on your trailer. I was like, well, they said you wouldn't. He goes, I don't care what they say. He goes, it doesn't make any sense for me to pick it up, set it down, and then back up, back out from underneath of it when I could just, you know, set it down, not slide out, pick it back up, and set it on your trailer. So we're going to wait here in the warm while he gets his pictures. And then uh, we got one more to pick up at IA in Grove City, Ohio, which is a 1500 Chevy. Uh, I don't know what the story is with that, but it's not a big deal. It's IAA. They'll set it on the back of the trailer, and uh, we'll be headed home. I'm going to show you guys this truck over here. Um, it's a Ram 3500. It's pretty messed up, but i got to spin the camera around quick. Someone had a bad day in that truck. Well, it was a nice flatbed, though. It was a nice little setup, but, man. So he's... Uh, 
Where'd he go? Oh, I see. See the top of him? He's all the way out there fishing my vehicle out. He's got to pull over to the, that garage door, get his pictures, and then he'll bring it out to me. There's my car. Well, I got it set up on there as good as I could. Had the winch flipped over out of the way, but I think we have enough room for the 1500 we're picking up to put on the back. About 18 foot plus whatever overhang. I don't need the ramps to flip. Uh, but this thing is, it's all torn apart. Uh, there's no batteries in it. Like the front case is all pulled off of it. Try to get that hood to close, but air suspension's all bottomed out, obviously, because it hasn't run. So we'll get this thing strapped and, uh, and, and get moving. See if we can't get this truck put on the back here before lunchtime. Second vehicle, got our title to it. We're parked out here now. I've got a suggestion for you guys. If you've never been to either a Copart or an insurance auto auctions, A, be careful where you park. It's nothing but pieces of metal, screws, nails, everything in this and these lots. And uh, try to follow the signage. Now, this place has zero signage, and this guy's already yelled at everybody that pulls in. But then again, they don't tell you where to park or where to go like you'd think maybe this would be like a loading area well this is not the loading area there was two guys parked out there i pulled in there first got yelled at so there's a tow truck up here i just pulled alongside of it but just watch where you park try to like you get body parts with screws sticking out of them plastic under covers and just about everything in these lots so He's gonna bring it out, so we're gonna stick it on the back here and uh, we'll be headed home. And the loader guy tried to tell me this wouldn't fit. Come on, man. Just checking on everything. Got four chains on this. Gonna put one more strap on this. And I'm looking at it. I got two on the other side, one on this side. Had one. Had to move this thing back a little bit by just using a, a ratchet strap to move it back. So things all torn apart. Electronics are all out of it, so you can't even get it into really into neutral. Oh, girl, squatting a little bit, not too bad. Let's roll.